Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about what options you have in case you don't wanna go to school, but of course you wanna be successful. Coming up. So today's video, I'm going to use the bell-shaped curve and I'm going to explain how it relates to success and the options you might have for things you can pursue to be successful. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It'll help me produce more content for you folks. Okay, before I go into the options you have, I wanna explain something really simple because I really like this, this is cool. This is one of the things I like about doing YouTube videos. I get to teach again, and I really like teaching. So this is the bell-shaped curve. I was cleaning out a property last night and I recycled this piece of paper and I thought it would be perfect for me to demonstrate the bell-shaped curve. You've probably seen this before. And basically what it demonstrates, this bell here can relate to anything. But in this case, we're gonna relate it to the human population, okay? There's 7.5 billion people in the world approximately. So let's just make it simple and say there's 100 people here in the world. So this would represent 100 people. The top 10% of the people in our example are gonna be the top 10% of successful people. And then you're gonna have the 80% and then you're gonna have the 10%. So this bell-shaped curve applies to most things in life. And actually, this it's very accurate. This is kind of how like success breaks down in the world. You have your super rich people, which are actually around 1%, but you have the wealthy people around 10%, the regular people about 80%, and then you have the poor people around 10%. This would be like extreme poverty. And again, this is gonna vary country to country, right? Because some places have more poverty than others, and some places have more wealth than others. But in this scenario, we're gonna talk about the United States, basically. So middle class is gonna be right in the middle of this bell-shaped curve, right at the top here that's gonna be at the crest of the bell. So this is gonna be the majority of people here. So if we're talking around 100 people, the middle is gonna represent 50 out of the 100, about 50%, right? So you want to be up here in the top 10%. Nobody wants to be here in the bottom 10%. You wanna be up towards the front. So let's say you're someone that works at Walmart or you work at a furniture display company or you're a gas station attendant or whatever it is you do. It's not a definition of who you are, but we're talking about your earning potential, how much money you're making, right? So right now we're gonna focus on how much you can make. So you might fall somewhere down on this, the bottom half. You might say, okay, well, I'm working at McDonald's, I'm making $11 an hour, you know, et cetera. So you're gonna be down over here. If you're like an engineer, a doctor, a nurse, or something like that, then you're gonna start floating up towards this way. You're a, you're a CEO for a big company, you're gonna be in the top 10% of this bell-shaped curve. So consider yourself in the human population to be somewhere in this range here. And your goal is to try to push yourself up and get over towards the middle and then over onto the left side here of this diagram. So here are the five options I think you can use to help you progress along the bell-shaped curve. Now this is an important topic to me because when I was thinking about this, I actually texted a few of my friends and asked them some questions about school. And when I started thinking about it, I probably have a few hundred people on my phone that have college degrees and I can just ask them about anything. Doctors, nurses, scientists, engineers, CEOs, whatever. I come in contact with thousands of people. In fact, most of the people I spend my time with and my friends, my family are not college educated. So, but I wanna see them succeed. So how can I help them succeed more? Well, that's what the question is. My friends ask me, well, how can I be successful? And they're thinking, well, I ain't go to school. You know, I don't have a college degree. And right away, they're kind of down on themselves. You don't have to go to school. Again, if you go to school, the probability of your success is gonna be much greater, okay? But there are other options. There's things you can do to develop your human capital. Okay, now let's assume I'm a teenager and I want to go out and I want to meet some girls, right? Well, if I put on my sweats and I don't shave, and I don't take a shower, I'm not going to have much success. I'm not going to meet very many girls. But let's say I go out and I buy myself a nice shirt. 
I put some cologne on, I shave, I take a shower, I brush my teeth. Then automatically I'm gonna move wide up. Girls are gonna wanna go out on dates with me. They say, okay, this guy looks well kept. He's well dressed. He smells good. Sure, I'll try it. I'll go out with him and I'll see if I like him. So anything you do, you're gonna use strategies to try to improve your marketability, to make you look better, kind of dress you up. So think about your career that way and your your work and everything you do, your businesses. You wanna kind of dress it up like that, like that teenager that's going on a date. Now, one thing to remember is age doesn't matter. We have a lot of ageism in our society. That's kind of like discrimination towards age. And there's this push where like by this age, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that. There, there's none of that. Forget about that. There's no such thing. That's just people thinking that way. I remember I was backpacking for three months in uh, Mexico and I met some Israelis and they were like in their 30s and they were telling me, hey, I'm about to start college. And I thought, damn, the are going to start college? I'm like 20 years old and I'm already in college. And, and I started wondering, well, what do I do? Like, man, what if I was going to college in my 30s? That's because I was 20 years old and I didn't know what I knew now. Now I know that it doesn't really matter what age you do things. There's no timetable. What's important is that you do things that make you happy and they get you to where you want to get on your life path. So again, don't count age as one of these uh, factors that affect your decisions. The first thing you want to look at is vocational training. Vocational training is very valuable. It's inexpensive and it, there's a huge demand for it. I needed a plumber yesterday. I couldn't find a plumber. I called like five, they were booked. I ended up paying this dude uh, off TaskRabbit 200 bucks to come do some work for two hours to connect this new electric heater for me. That's a lot. That's a hundred bucks an hour. That's more, more than engineers make, than doctors make. Oh, not all doctors, but some doctors. It's a lot of money. And this guy's telling me he's booked up every day. I got his number. He did excellent work. I'm going to be calling him. I also needed an outlet outside because an inspector told me I needed to fix it on this property. Again, I called all over, couldn't find anybody. I finally found an electrician. I had some that were quoting me $750 to do about two hours of work. The best deal I could find for someone that was licensed because the city wants someone with a license was this guy that's gonna charge me $275. That's a lot. That's $137.50 an hour. So if you go on the internet and you look at jobs, there aren't a lot of jobs that pay over $137.50 an hour. That's a lot of money. And you know, you can become a plumber, a solar installer, a lot of these things very easily. It only takes like less than a year in some cases, some cases a little bit more. Construction, look at where the demand is. There's a big shortage of skilled labor. So you can learn a vocation and you can earn just as much money as someone that went to school and got a master's and a doctorate and all that kind of stuff. You just have to figure out where the need is where you live because the, the market has different needs. There, you might live in a town where there's a school that trains plumbers, but there might not be a plumbing school for 100 miles. So in your town, there's a saturation of plumbers and the rate is low, but that 100 miles is kind of like the Mojave Desert. There's no plumber, so they can go out there and they can get twice as much. I know my friend became an internal medicine doctor and he went to work in Kentucky. He told me he was making twice as much as he made here in Los Angeles. So he stayed out there for about four or five years, paid off all his debts, made all this money for whatever, came back to LA and started doing some other stuff. He actually started an energy institute, but that's just an idea of looking at what the needs are in the market but number one is vocational training. Second option is community college. I love community college. They have vocational training, it's low cost and it's low commitment. You can come and go as you want. You can drop a class if you want. You can pick it up next semester. It's not a big deal. In a lot of cases, it's free or almost free. It's not expensive. And if you don't want a degree, you can be like my friend Charles. Charles is a electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and he's a math teacher and he's in his 80s and he still goes to community college he just likes it it's fun to learn cool stuff so he goes at night he takes classes on history or art or whatever it is he had interest in he just keeps sharpening his skills now he's an extreme example but let's say you're a regular guy and you're just working in you know, a construction job or whatever you do which are all very valuable jobs but you just want some more knowledge 
Well, you can go to community college at night, you can study art, you can study architecture. And then instead of being a guy that just builds a box for a house, you could be a guy that builds a really cool house with design and you can increase your value because your product is gonna be that much better. People are gonna look at your house and gonna say, hey, I can hire this dude over here or this guy over here for 10% more, but his have more style. I prefer this guy. So if you think about it, clothes, there isn't much difference between a shirt like this that has a Nike swoosh on it or one that doesn't. But it has a little more design maybe, a little more color, the fabric might be just a little different and you, that's enough for you to probably pay double or triple. I got this out of, the, out of a Goodwill, coincidentally, but you can, these things will make a big difference. It'll make a big difference in your, in your presentation and the marketability of your product and your skills. The third option is join the military. I know not, not many people want to go to the military, but the military has a lot of good things to offer. They offer school forgiveness loans. They offer health care. They offer a lot of benefits. They give you opportunities for free travel. And in fact, if you look at the statistics, people that come out of the military and then get jobs as CEOs or start new companies, they have a higher success rate than other people. People that have military background have a higher tendency to be successful, be better leaders, have better discipline. There's a lot of, of characteristics you can pick up being in the military that can help you increase your success in life. And again, if you're not sure what you want to do, then why not bump around in the military, right? You can go on a ship in the Navy like my friend John did. You can travel around. He used to go around the Caribbean and do drug raids on uh, cartels. And he has all these awesome stories how they used to catch boats full of coke. And then they'd arrest all these people and then they start cutting the bags of coke and throwing the coke overboard and all this all crazy stuff. Stuff that I'll probably never see in my life, but he got to see it on a regular basis. So you can have some really good experiences in the military. Number four, take some time to travel. If you haven't been traveling, go traveling. If you don't have a lot of money, go to some cheap you know, destinations, places that are close to you, like India, China, Mexico. Depending on where you live on the planet, go somewhere that's inexpensive. And if you can, take a few months and just kind of hang out and learn stuff. There's a lot of benefits of doing so. It gives you a new way of seeing things and it gives you some global competence. It helps you to understand people, helps to learn new cultures, and it helps kind of shape the way you look at things. Like if you grow up in a neighborhood and your houses all have picket fences and that's all you've seen your whole life. If you travel somewhere and there are no picket fences and it's dirt roads and the bathrooms are all uh, squat pans like I saw in the Middle East, then that's gonna really change the way you look at things. You're gonna realize how other people live. So that'll give you some perspective when you're problem solving things to give you something new to think about. Maybe you'll come up with some creative ideas that other people that don't have your experiences will have. I know my cousin Chris was asking me, should I go traveling this summer or should I go work this summer? And I said, definitely go travel. That one month of travel you're gonna do is gonna change your life. You're gonna have experiences that you'll never forget. I told them this, when you're 80 years old and you're dying, you're gonna think back and you're gonna remember that one month that you went traveling, but you're not gonna remember the one month you spent working, doing construction. He, they work, they use him as a ditch digger. I mean, which is fine. He's getting paid, he's learning something new and I'm, I know he's learning other skills, but there's nothing that he's gonna do that's gonna have the same impact. So use your time wisely. Travel has a big impact on you and your learning experiences and the way you look at life. One thing I always think about when I think about traveling is I'm a vegetarian, so I went to buy the Sloppy Joes and I was looking at the package and it was actually made of monk fruit. And the, in the back of the package, it talks about this lady that went backpacking in India and she found the natives there because something like 70% of people in India are vegetarians. And they were using this fruit called monk fruit because it has a texture kind of like beef and they, they season it and they use it like in tacos and hamburgers and all this other kind of stuff. So I bought the meat and it was pretty good. I used it in my sloppy joes and I made tacos out of it, but it's made out of monk fruit. So that, that lady learned this while traveling. That's an example of something that you can pick up. You might learn and see things that you can bring home to where you live and capitalize and form a business out of it. The fifth option 
is to get an internship. And this is awesome. This works for anybody, whether you went to college or not. This can really help you gain some valuable skills. My cousin Candy wasn't ready to go to school, so she decided she was gonna do an internship. So she started interning at movie studios because we live in LA and we're in Hollywood, and there's all these opportunities. And little by little, she got pushed a certain direction and she ended up doing quality control for movies. So now I go to her work and she has this awesome office, all these computers, and she learns how to, how to do quality control movies. Basically, she'll get the new movies and she'll watch them. She'll look for things that might be wrong with the film. And according to what she finds, she makes recommendations so the studio can correct it and deliver a better quality product to someone. Now, this is something that she learned over the years doing internships. And she's actually making more than some of my friends that went to college. So it's turned into a very lucrative career for her. Just remember, there's a whole spectrum of jobs. So you're gonna need people to go to school. You're gonna need the scientists, you're gonna need the creators, the innovators, all that kind of stuff. Then you're gonna need all the way down to like people that clean, that work, that cook food, everything. We need everything. Everybody is valuable. So every skill is valuable. So whatever it is you do, let's say you're a cook. Well, go take some cooking classes, and learn some new recipes and learn some new techniques. If, you, if you're good at making tacos, Go learn some Korean food cooking and make some Korean tacos. Those are hot right now in LA. So you can really apply it to anything. If you're doing construction, you're a construction worker, and you're in a union like my brothers, you can go to, a, go to the union, get some additional training, learn electricity, learn plumbing, learn framing. There's just all this scaffolding you can do. Scaffolding can take place in whatever field you do. Just keep building your skills up. Regardless of what you do, just build your skills up that's gonna help you be more successful. You don't necessarily have to go enroll in school, but you do have to keep building your skills up. Now, if you're saying, well, hey, I don't, I'm good, I'm an artist or whatever, okay, there's always something you can learn. If you're an artist making sculptures, then learn oil paint. If you do oil paint, then learn how to play the piano. Stimulate different parts of your brain that might help facilitate learning and production in your main field. That's gonna make you more successful. It's gonna make you more unique. It's gonna make you an innovator. So thank you again for listening. And if you have any comments, please comment so I can address your questions. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you.